Support characters are the goats of Genshin Impact, plain and simple. Why am I bringing this up? Well, I just did an account review for an AR-58 player, late game player, who has never been able to clear floor 12 of the abyss. So I needed to figure out what was wrong. They had a ton of five stars, but almost all of their five stars were main DPS characters. I'm talking Xiao, all height them, Hu Tao, Ganyu, Ayaka, Sino. I'm gonna stop there, but they had even more. And then on top of that, their support characters were almost completely neglected. Some of them weren't even leveled past 20. They had low talent levels and no artifact sets to help them. And it made me wanna make this video right here, breaking down why support characters are so unbelievably important to invest in in Genshin and why main DPS characters need good supports to truly shine. When you understand just how good support characters are, you are going to become better at building strong teams and you're gonna get better at knowing where to spend your resin or your primos to make your account better. So let's get to it. I hope you guys enjoy the vid. So what is a support character? Of course, you could say any character that creates shields, buffs the team, or heals is a support character, which they are. But when I say support character, I pretty much mean any character that isn't a main DPS. So along with healers and shielders, I'm talking about sub DPS characters as well. A sub DPS is a character that does a lot of damage for the team, but does not have to stay on the field for an extended period of time to do their damage. Characters like Fischl, Xingqiu, Shangling, while they are all very different, they are all amazing sub DPSs, some of the best in the game. So for the rest of the guide, when I say support, I just mean not main DPS characters. So just to be fair, let's define a main DPS character. Main DPSs do a ton of damage and they require very high quality artifacts to amplify their stats. And they usually take a long time on the field to stay there and constantly deal a ton of damage. Let's use one of my personal favorite characters for our first example, Hu Tao. So Hu Tao does practically nothing when she is off field. She doesn't provide pyro application, heals, shields, anything like that for her team. For Hu Tao to be useful, she needs to be on the field with her skill up, constantly attacking to deal a ton of damage. And don't get me wrong, this is no jab at Hu Tao. When she is on the field gaming, she is blowing shit up. She is the star of the show. So she needs a supporting cast that can give her a bunch of sick effects that she can benefit from when she is the one on the field. We need these supports to fill the downtime of Hu Tao's skill. Her skill lasts nine seconds. The cooldown is 16 seconds. So there are seven seconds where Hu Tao can't do anything and the supports need to come in and set up for Hu Tao to come in and blow him up again. Like a huge shield, so Hu Tao doesn't get knocked around during her skill, a hydro applicator for her to vaporize her attacks, or maybe someone who can shred pyro resistances, amplifying her damage. With all those pieces together, that is how you make Hu Tao pop off. So with that explained, it is the perfect time to go into my first big point of the video. You only want one main DPS per team in Genshin. Genshin teams are made of four characters, so we need three well-built up supports to pair with our main DPS character. And if we're trying to clear the abyss, that is two teams we need. So two main DPSs and six well-built supports. And to be completely honest, having only six support characters built up is probably not good enough to clear most abysses nowadays. They make the teams so restrictive, needing to bring three of these exact specific elements to beat floor 12, or you need a shield or a heal, stuff like that. So what I mean is dedicated main DPS characters like Yoimiya here are pretty much only one per team. Let me show you just a few examples here. Let's start with Hu Tao. I promise I'll use other characters than Hu Tao, all right? Hu Tao is so good. She does more than enough damage to carry an entire team, but she needs her support. Let's start with Xing Chou. He is going to apply Hydro off field so that Hu Tao is able to vaporize her charge attacks, doing 1.5 times damage, which is huge. And his rain swords are gonna give her some damage reduction and stagger resistance, also huge for her. Dong Li will provide a huge shield, giving her even more stagger resistance so she will not get knocked around during her skill when she needs to do damage for those important nine seconds. Dong Li's pillar even shreds resistance of the enemies, buffing her damage further. Finally, for this team example, Bennett. Bennett is going to provide huge heals for the team. He's gonna activate Pyro Resonance for Hu Tao, and he gives a massive attack buff, which Hu Tao loves. This team is not the most 
optimal team for Hu Tao's personal damage, but it is extremely comfy and it does more than enough damage to 36 star the abyss if it's well built so all three of those characters are going to support hu tao shing cho is a sub dps he's going to do big hydro damage himself but he's going to enable vaporize reactions for hu tao zhongli is a shielder and resistance shredder and bennett is a healer and attack buffer so with only one main dps one sub dps and two dedicated supports i am destroying the game let's take ayaka for our next example ayaka is a main dps and for her to do the big insane damage she was born to do she needs the enemies to be frozen in place or she needs pyro so that she can melt her burst which is only possible with good support let's show how a freeze team is built and keep in mind freeze is not an offensive reaction no melt no vapes no aggravates okay so we need to get creative in the ways that we amplify ayaka's damage first we need a hydro character to cause the freeze reaction and hold the enemies in place my go-to freeze comp option is kokomi she applies a lot of hydro off field with her jellyfish which also heals and she can buff the team's attack with things like the tenacity of millilith artifact set and a weapon like thrilling tails next we need an animo let's use kazuha he's the go he is going to shred cryo resistances with the viridescent venerer artifact set whenever he swirls with cryo and he's also going to be able to swirl with cryo or hydro so that we can apply more elements to keep more enemies frozen finally i'll use shenha in the last slot shenha is tailor-made to make your main DPS cryo characters absolutely broken. That's all her kit does. She's a no brainer, but she does some other things to support the team that might not be as obvious. First, she's the second cryo character. So she's gonna activate cryo resonance for Ayaka, giving her 15% more crit. She is also going to generate cryo energy particles for Ayaka. Ayaka can have trouble getting enough energy up so that she can burst on command every rotation. Shenha is going to help with that by getting more cryo energy. And she also allows Kazuha to swirl cryo easier since she is a second way of applying cryo for the team. And she can even amplify Kazuha's damage if he swirls with cryo with his burst. The icy quills that she does are gonna boost his damage too. So this team has a healer, attack buffer, and reaction enabler in Kokomi. It has a cryo resistance shredder and reaction enabler in Kazuha. And then it has a massive cryo buffer, cryo energy particle generator, and a little bit of elemental reaction enabler in Shenna. Without supports like these, Ayaka does not perform at her highest level. So if we swap down Shenha for a character like, say, Ganyu, well then Ayaka and Ganyu are both not going to be performing at the highest level they can. They are going to be fighting for screen time, both wanting to be the main DPS on the field. If Ayaka is off the field with her burst up, she is not providing value to the team and vice versa. Or if we swapped out Bennett for, say, Yoimiya. When Yoimiya is on the field, Pew Pewing, Hu Tao is on the bench, providing zero value to the team. When Hu Tao's on field, Yoimiya is back there providing nothing. We want every single character on the team to provide value and supports let us do that. This is my other big point for the whole video. You straight up don't need many main DPS characters on your Genshin account. Supports are the interchangeable parts of a team that can be mixed and matched for the content you're trying to clear. With only three or four main DPS characters on your account with tons of supports leveled up, you can pretty much run any team comp in the game. Sino can be used with Dendro and Animo on an aggravate team to do big aggravate damage. But let's say you need Hydro, okay? You can run Sino on a Hyper Bloom team. He's gonna get the job done. Or let's even say you need Cryo to deal with a certain shield, Let's go with a hyper fridge team and combine them all. Sino can do that. Sino was the one constant here. He can be used on all those different kinds of team comps by changing the supports. Let's take an oddball like Ito. Against content that doesn't need any specific element, we can just steamroll them with Mono Geo. But if the enemy has a specific elemental weakness we need to bring, does that mean we need to drop Ito? No. We need to get through enemies weak to Pyro? That's cool. Slap Bennett on there. Maybe they're weak to Hydro? Use Shin Cho. He's gonna work fine. We need some heals, put on Kokomi. Or even Diluc. He can be on a vaporized comp. Melt, 
virgin, even mono pyro. What I'm getting at is with a limited amount of main DPS characters, you can pretty much beat anything the game throws at you by getting creative with your support. And the element of your main DPS character doesn't really matter. You can overcome whatever elemental weakness they have with your supports. So you don't need a main DPS of every element. You only need a few if your supports are good. Finally, some of the best teams in Genshin Impact don't even use a main DPS. Look at this team right here. Who is the main DPS right here? You may be thinking, Eeks, that's a, that's a lot of low damage characters. How are you gonna do any damage? The whole team works together to cause this huge bloom damage. Or this aggravate team, who is the main DPS here? The answer is none of them. They are all contributing to the team to deal a ton of damage. There is not one specific character that is going to spend a long extended period of time on the field. So if you have just a few DPS characters, investing in your support or pulling for support will probably benefit you more. Let me leave you with this. When you look at most Genshin Impact tier lists, you see all of these characters consistently at the top. Are any of them characters that can be called an on-field main DPS? Homies, as always, I hope you found this video useful. If you wanna ask me more questions about Genshin, or if you just wanna hang out with a sick community to play Genshin with, come check out the stream. It's always lit. Everyone over there is fantastic. Huge shout outs to the patrons, Zik, Gophers, Caldo, Meow. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for the support. And homies, check if you're subscribed to the channel. It really does help out a lot. The like, the comment, it goes a very long way. Thank you for all the support lately, guys. It means so much to me. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.